The Good Morning shares an almost identical biomechanical profile to the RDL. It is a vertically loaded hip hinge performed with a rigid spine with your weight in your heels without allowing your knees to track forward while pushing your hips back and with the load in the same relative position to both your body and gravity. The only difference between an RDL and a Good Morning is that instead of the load being held in the hands, as in the RDL, the bar is placed over the upper or mid traps in either a high or low bar position, like the squat. Unlike the squat, where the default bar position is low bar for powerlifting and high bar for other goals, I recommend a low bar position for the good morning when you first adopt this movement. Also unlike the squat, in the good morning your torso inclines a great deal. Depending on your mobility, you may even reach the point where your torso is parallel to the floor. Using a high bar position, this can result in the bar rolling up onto your cervical spine or with you extending your neck to maintain bar position, either of which can be dangerous. On the other hand, with a low bar position, the load will be more secure when you reach the end range of motion of the good morning. With that said, as a final note on bar position, if you do have well-developed traps and strong thoracic extensors, you can use a high bar position if the bar stays securely in place when using such a position. However, due to the longer lever arm, it will require a lighter load and will place more emphasis on your spinal erectors. Just like when using a low bar position when squatting, you should retract the shoulder blades throughout the lift keep the back tight, and move the hands in closer to your shoulders on the bar to create a shelf. Remember, this arm position can cause pain for some, especially with heavier loads. If you can only get into this position with bent wrists, or if you feel pain, I would highly recommend wearing wrist wraps. If you still feel wrist, elbow, or shoulder pain when using a low bar position, even when wearing wraps, try a thumb over grip, and try widening your grip on the bar until the movement is pain free. Again, just like the squat, you will use the same walkout. After securing the bar, use a three-step walkout to efficiently get into position. This is especially important when using heavy loads to minimize fatigue during setup. The movement begins with the eccentric phase, with each rep starting with you pushing your hips directly backward and maintaining the barbell over the center of your foot. For every degree that your trunk inclines forward towards the floor, your hips should move backwards. This is called a hip hinge. To ensure you maintain tension on the hamstrings, don't let your knees track forward at all. Imagine a short wall or bench blocking your knees from traveling forward. Keep your hips high, your weight in your heels, and maintain a chest up position throughout the lift. Keep a neutral spine throughout the movement, thinking of your torso as a rigid object as your hips extend. Only go as far down on the lowering phase of a good morning as you can while the hips are still traveling backwards and the spine remains neutral. You may be able to go deeper, but at the cost of maintaining a neutral spine or by lowering only at the lumbar, which is no longer a hip hinge and will not add increased tension to the glutes or hamstrings. Done properly, your spine will remain straight, your hips will travel backward throughout the eccentric, your knees will not shift forward until after the eccentric, and you will have your weight in your heels. Done properly, you should feel a significant stretch of the hamstrings the deeper you go.